Good afternoon. For this discussion board thread, I will be looking at three primary source documents that would enhance a U.S. history AP or freshman college U.S. history on the witchcraft trials. Before I start on these documents, let me give you a little background into the Salem witchcraft trials. In January of 1692, Betty Paris and Abigail Williams fall into hysterics at the home of Samuel Paris, who is a visiting minister in the Salem village and also the father of Betty Paris. Unable to find a medical cause for their sufferings, thoughts immediately turn to witchcraft. And throughout 1692, uh, over 100 people are going to be arrested and jailed on suspicion of practicing witchcraft. And in most of these, they were petty grievances against neighbor. Maybe they wanted the land that they had. Maybe they felt they were taken advantage of, but there was no real evidence that these guys were ever guilty of witchcraft. In the end, 20 innocent lives are taken, 19 were hung, while Giles Corey was actually pressed to death. So what evidence were they able to use to determine whether indeed witchcraft had been practiced? Is there any primary source material that would enhance a history lesson on the Salem witchcraft trials that isn't already known? A cursory search through the Shaw Evans Shoemaker database produced a couple of sermons from which we can better understand the evidence judges had during the trials to consider. The first sermon is by Diodot Lawson, and for time's sake, I'm only going to give the short version of his title, Christ's Fidelity, the Only Shield Against Satan's Malignity. It was preached on March 24, 1692, during which the trials were ongoing. Dawson's sermon is a reminder that under Christ's protection, Satan cannot attack the faithful Christian. He expounds on the ways that Satan might attempt to cause problems amongst the village. And in many ways, this sermon is actually a reminder that if the village turned back from their ways and turned back to God, then he was going to deliver them from that evil. One might even go so far as to say it was a sermon meant to encourage the faithful. The next two are a father and son duo by the names of Increase and Cotton Mather. Cotton, his work for time's sake, the shortened version is The Wonders of the Invisible World, while his father has cases of conscious concerning evil spirits personating men, which crafts infallible proofs of guilt, and such are accused as with that crime, all considered according to the strict scriptures, history, experience, and the judgment of many learned men. Both father and son write extensively on the evidence that should and should not be used in a court of law. Both urge that spectral evidence, which was that of the ghostly type evidence, not be admitted. They were very adamant that this was unprovable. You could not say in, without doubt that somebody did or did not see something. Therefore, they, it was at their urging. They're like, please don't use this. However, according to Robert Clef, who was a cloth merchant at the time, who would go on to write a book denouncing the Salem witchcraft trials, and especially Cotton Mather, he blames the explosion of the trials on Cotton Mather as a result of his work. These documents, though, when placed in the hands of older students, once again, think AP U.S. History to Freshman U.S. History 221, is going to help them understand the theology and evidentiary issues behind the trials. They are going to learn how ministers of the time influenced the court of law in general in each town or region. Church life dominated almost every aspect of life during the colonial period, and the lives of the Salem Village residents are no different. These documents will present students with a window of an opportunity to learn more about how religion influenced the era. Thank you.